Assalamualaikum and a very good day to our panel. So today we would like to present our STP2 with the title of the making of a biodegradable plastic film from the red seaweed. So I will introduce myself. So my name is Fatih Saida bin Dizel with ID number TC17050 as a presenter one and my partner is Rabiatul Adawiyah with ID number TC17033 as a presenter two. This is our talk for today. This is our problem statement. Nowadays, there are increasing number of plastic pollution. Plastic production is not only plastic bag, but it includes bottle and food packaging. Michel Bender has stated that by 2025, one ton of plastic for every three ton of fish in the ocean. It will, be, it will also be dangerous not for only the ocean but also for our daily life too. This is because the plastic will produce toxin in the ocean and make the water is undrinkable. So it also dangerous for 700 species because exposed to the toxin such as BPA that interfere with the food web. So we come up with our ideas to make a project to make uh, another biodegradable plastic to help the plastic pollution in the world. First is to fabricate biodegradable hygiene sack. Second is to characterize the physical properties, water solubility and degradability of film. Third is to determine the role of seaweed, starch and glycerol is our literature review. We choose three topics in our literature review that is first is plastic material for their properties and application. Second is our agar based edible film but with glycerol plasticizer and third is touch based biodegradable polymer with polyvinyl alcohol. So for our project we will choose agar as our material from seaweed. Seaweed has different types and different characterization. As you can see in our slide, so there is three types of seaweed. There is brown seaweed, red seaweed, and green seaweed. So for ground seaweed, it has a low protein and poor water resistance. And this is not suitable to build a biodegradable film because it has a poor water resistance. So for red seaweed, it has a high protein and it also emulsifies and stabilizes in dairy product and also fuels negative charge per disaccharide. So for red seaweed, uh, there is more using of red seaweed in our food product. So for green seaweed, it has a poor aging properties and can easily alter by temperature and difficult to stabilize. So as the previous slide, it also have a disadvantage because of poor aging properties. This is due to green seaweed. So we choose red seaweed in our project. So we'll continue with our methodology. This is the material that we use in our experiment. First is seaweed powder, cornstarch, glycerin, distilled water, agar powder, salt, and sorbitol. And this is our apparatus. Next is our procedure. So first, we will weigh all the materials such as 1 gram of seaweed powder, 2 gram of glycerin and sorbitol, and 5 gram of cornstarch. And then, we need to mix all the solution with half liter of distilled water in a beaker and then stir it with the glycerin. After the solution is diluted, then we need to check the pH of the solution as one of our characterization. After that, the solution will heat up by using a hot plate mati stirrer for 30 minutes. This is because we need to ensure that the solution will dissolve in a high temperature. Uh, 
After 30 minutes, we will wait again the solution for 150 gram to pour solution into the nasty bag. Then, we will dry the solution in the oven for 2 hours. We choose nasty bag because it will be easy to take off the film when it dry. After 2 hours, we take off the film. We take we take 20 gram of film to do our next characterization. That is to know the solubility of the film. So, using hot plate magnetic stirrer, we stir the 20 gram of film in the 30 ml of water for 5 minutes. So, all the data were recorded. And our last characterization is to know the solubility of the film. So, we weigh the 50 gram of soil and 20 gram of film. 20 gram of film. Then, we bury it for 7 days. After 7 days, the soil will be weighed again to see the difference of the film. Hi and Assalamualaikum. My name is Roberto Adaria and I will continue the presentation. Let's move on to data collection and analysis. According to the pH level as shown, all samples proved to be in neutral condition between 5.3 and 6.2. Next, the mass of samples from different extraction provides a constant final mass after drying from a volume of 150 ml. The solubility of each sample has been calculated using the given formula in equation 1 by keeping the size, temperature and speed at constant. Thus, from the figure, it shows that carrageenan charted higher solubility than agar. Finally, the biodegradability of each sample has been calculated by using the formula in equation 2. Each sample was buried in soil and the mass for before and after has been recorded. As you can see in the figure, it shows sudden decrease at sample D which might be influenced by the soil humidity and the way it was buried. It's either the soil was disturbed and the sample is not fully buried. Next, moving on to discussion, the physical observation. As the mass of carrageenan increase, it produces much more stronger algae-like order. Sample became more yellowish in color. It forms rigid, sticky, and brittle gels after drying, which is totally not soluble at normal water temperature. Why did this happen? It is because the copper carrageenan contains an ionic sulfated linear polysaccharide and only lambda carrageenan dissolves in cold water. This is because due to their difference in sulfate groups and anhydrous features. Next, as the mass of agar increases, sample became more grayish, forms clear, transparent and firm after drying which is easier to handle than carrageenan. Why did this happen? It is because of the hydrophilic collider properties cause excellent gelling power. While in the other hand, the polymer embrittlement was caused by photodegradation and fluctuation in ambient temperature and humidity that reconstruct the agar's crystallinity. The role of starch. At first, topical starch was used for this experiment but then it was changed to cornstarch. Why is that so? It is because of the amylose content on cornstarch is much more higher than tapioca starch. Even the granule size for cornstarch is much more greater than tapioca which causes a much more greater diffusion of polymer which blends with red seaweed to improve thermosolubility and reduce water resistibility of the film. The role of glycerin which acted as the dispersion of seaweed and starch it is also hydrophilic in nature, which helps to enlarge the chain mobility and flexibility of seaweed and starch. The analysis of pH level in each film produced neutral condition between 5.3 to 6.2, which is due to the non toxicity nature of red seaweed. Thus, it can be safe to be in contact with human and animal skin. Now, the final mass of sample produced from this experiment was at constant, but sample from agar shows much more heavier than carrageenan. This is because of the firmness of agar due to its supportive structure in cell wall of red seaweed. Next, the solubility of sample. Sample D carrageenan and B agar charted the highest solubility according to the type of extraction. Sample using carrageenan recorded great solubility compared to agar. This proved that carrageenan can be digested satisfactorily. 
Next, the biodegradability of sample. Sample D carotenoid and C agar obtain the highest solubility according to the type of extraction. Growth of fungus and bitterness during aging can be seen clearly on both types of sample. Sample using carotenoid shows excellent biodegradability compared to agar. This manifests that carotenoid can be discharged safely to the environment as it may decompose naturally within a short time. Finally, the conclusion and recommendation. Neutral level of pH can be produced which can be safely used as a hygiene porch either for human and animals. Films were highly dependent on the concentration of cornstarch and glycerin. Next, as the concentration of derived polysaccharide increases from red seaweed, it will influence the thickness, transparency, solubility and biodegradability. The best combination of carotene and agar with starch was at 3 gram. And finally, this experiment was totally cost effective. The recommendation that I can suggest to be used in future is to use alkaline solution or alcohol precipitation method to integrate the chemical modification and increase gel toughness within the final product of kappa carotene with present of potassium or calcium ions. It has great potential as a gel forming material. Next, you may mix starch beforehand together with off separately from the glycerin by rapid stirring and heating to avoid rheology trouble. In a nutshell, to all my lovely panels and friends, I would like to ask you to be aware of your own impact. Be a part of the solution, but not a part of the pollution. Thank you.